Hi, this is Matt Kendall. I'm doing a quick uh, client testimonial and case study in regards to IEMT. Uh, I've got Louise uh, that I'm going to be speaking to today who we did uh, an IEMT session with. She's also a business coach as well, so it would be interesting to her, hear her take on how she thinks IEMT can work in the coaching world, which that's the way I'm really taking things now. So I'm going to be doing IEMT trainings. I really want to work with coaches and therapists who are already trained we're already working with clients, but want to get a really amazing skill and technique and a way of working with people to help maximize the results that they can get for their own clients. So hello, Louise, how are you doing? Oh, hi, Matt. Doing really well, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Cool. Well, let's start at uh, the beginning. First of all, how do you know about me? Um, I'm on a Facebook page called Speakers Corner. As you mentioned, I'm a business coach. I also do confidence coaching. I've been on that uh, Facebook page for some time. I happen to be on there as your good self. Uh, ask for 10 volunteers to um, try this technique through the internet, um, through a medium called Zoom, to see if it actually worked doing it that way rather than just face-to-face. -face. That's right. So what I was doing is basically I was just trying to... I do a lot of uh, client sessions one-to-one. -one. I just wanted to see if I could get any results doing it online. Um, mm. If you're just starting out this technique, I don't recommend to do that. I recommend to do it one-to-one. -one. It's uh, um, you know, much easier. Um, so why was it you actually contacted me? What was going on in your life? Um, I haven't worked for, well, I haven't worked for almost two years um, through serious illness. Um, I'm recovering from cancer. It was advanced when it was found. I've had lots of treatment. Um, I'd been given a terminal diagnosis last year and that no, no longer stands. Um, I've become more and more well. And I felt that I needed some input into me before I went forward and continued to deliver coaching myself. I felt like I, I needed something. And what you were saying with this um, just really resonated with me. Because mm, if people don't know what IEMT is, um, IEMT, I was saying clearly, basically, there's lots of people have lots of different ways of sort of explaining what happens. It essentially reframes a memory, you know, in sort of the NLP term, it reframes the memory. So you can take, so you can come out of the memory and observe it without the emotional input. So we worked on some uh, particular memories with yourself. Let me ask you, what was it like when you first, well, when you first accessed one of the memories, you started, you know, you were overwhelmed, you know, you started crying, became very upset. Absolutely, I did. Now, when you think about, because we worked on two main particular, I know we did lots of other ones, but we, well, we did two main particular memories. We did, yeah. What's it now like thinking about the memories that we worked on? It's bizarre. And I know that doing this technique, you don't need to know what it is, but I think yeah. for anybody watching this video, to know how, uh, what depth of emotion was involved in that memory. Mm. Are you okay if I just very briefly say what it was? Of course, of course. Because yeah. because I think that that's you know kind whatever of you're comfortable with. Key, you? really, I'm yeah, comfortable okay. with it. And it's key. Um, I was told last June, June 2017, that I was terminally ill. Um, I'd got between three weeks and three years to live, and I wasn't doing very well. I was in hospital at the time um, um, through cancer. Uh, my kidneys had failed. Um, I just haven't had an operation. We didn't know if it was going to work or not. I then had to go forward and have another operation. We didn't know if that was going to work or not. Basically, if they didn't, I'd got two weeks to live. Um, I've got three adult daughters. I'm a single parent. And they were brought into the hospital for the consultant to tell them what the situation was. Um, so they were there with two of my sisters as well. <coughs> and myself, a nurse, a Macmillan nurse and my consultant. So that any questions any of them have got, they could ask her. The memory is, I was beyond pain and beyond emotion, physically, mentally, emotionally, I, uh, at that point in time. But I watched my children crumble in front of my eyes. Mm. After I started to become well, that memory was awful, <coughs> incredibly emotional. And that's the mm. one that you say, I did start to cry as I began to think of the emotion. Because to watch your children physically crumble yeah. in front of your eyes is horrendous. Um, what's actually happened after doing this technique is that the 
almost the brightness of the picture of the memory and the sounds of the memory have all been dulled. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So, so I still have the memory. The memory is still. You still know what happened. Bad. Yeah. But it's the colours grey. And interesting, one of my daughters fell almost to the floor. She almost collapsed. Mm. And my eldest daughter picked her up and held on to her really tight. And I know um, any of you that are parents out there that are watching this, you know, if you've got three girls together, there's going to be arguments. But what I know is that when push comes to shove, they are right there for one another mm. and they will support one another. And that's what that memory now gives to me. Mm. Not what they were being told yeah. and how they were reacting isn't the main pull of the memory. The main pull of the memory is they will stick together and help each other when there's a major issue. You see, that's, that's a really interesting thing. So not only did the, um, the quality of the memory, the, sub the submodalities of the memory change, but the meaning of it also changed as well. It did. Yeah. We're over a year on from that. We're, we're September the third today, aren't we? And that, and that was June last year. We're over a year away from that. Mm. And when I did the work with you, that memory was as strong as it was on the day. Yeah, it happened. Of course. Well, because the emotion the now. Yeah. Sorry, the emotion now is um, removed from it, mm. which is good because it obviously yeah. you're holding it and it, it's stressful. You don't realise it is, but it is. Of course. I'll tell you what, so I get into it. Okay, so you had this memory, and then um, obviously when you thought about it, there's a lot of emotion. It used to trigger, you know, a lot of distress when you actually... Absolutely. So now when you think about it, you can still, you still know what happened, but there's no emotional connection. You see it factually, and you can actually see things and have a different understanding of the memory rather than what actually happened before. Absolutely. That's what's oh, happened. I've lost... Oh, so just speak again. Hello. Oh, sorry, that was my earphones. Yeah. I'll ask that again. So, okay. so, um, so, you, so basically, you have this memory. Um, again, we don't remove the negative memory because that's you don't get any value from removing it. Mm. You get value from learning from it and understanding it from a different position. So, when you think about this memory now, you access it as much more factual. Um, that the color is obviously all drained. Um, and you can actually see your daughters looking after each other rather than just collapsing. So you actually get a different understanding of what happened rather than just the shock of being told this information. So, so what's it like now mentally thinking, well, with that memory being like that? Um, what's it like mentally? That's a difficult question, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't think about it. It doesn't keep popping into my mind. And before um, we did uh, this session, how, how often would you sort of think and ruminate on it? At least weekly. Yeah. At the beginning, daily. Yeah. Uh, and at least weekly. And every time I thought about it, I got upset. Yes, of course. For them. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, it's made, made a massive difference. Excellent. Yeah. Now, we only did one session. We did about sort of half an hour, 40 minutes, you know, mm. to do this. This was not a, a long you know, a long thing that we actually did as a very brief, and that's why it's called a brief change work. Now, what I want people to understand is how powerful IEMT is when dealing with people, especially when you're coaching them as well. Because if, if somebody was trying to get you to do something at the moment, um, or before you had the session, there would be a lot of emotional resistance. So what I help people to do is to identify the emotional resistance and to actually minimize it so therefore, when you're doing something, you can actually do it without hitting all the emotions. So you can actually do it in a much more, what can I do, factual, you know, progressive kind of way, rather than dealing with overwhelm, essentially. Mm. So you're a coach yourself. How do you think that this would have an impact when you're working with your own clients by using something like IMT with your own clients? Well, like I've said, I haven't worked for a couple of years mm -hmm. and I came to you because I feel like I want some input, uh, almost CPD really, you know, continued professional development yeah. into me before I begin coaching again. I don't think I'd be giving uh, the right kind of value to my customers to just think uh, I can just pop straight back into it yeah. after the enormity of what's happened. Of you can't. Um, but one of the things that I have experienced consistently, 
And I say I'm a business coach. My specialism is in startup businesses. I love the inspirational bit, the startup mm-hmm. bit, the ideas, getting the ideas into making it into something. Yeah. Um, very often people come to you and want to start up a business after something's happened to them. Yeah. Very often it's something like redundancy. Yeah. So they feel they have nothing to lose. They don't have a job to give up. It's not a decision they've made. Um, so they haven't got sort of, uh, you know, a spouse um, or parents saying to them, you know, that's too risky because they haven't got a job anyway. They've maybe got some redundancy cash to put into it to get it started. Um, but sometimes they are experiencing, and I'll use redundancy as, as an example, the experience of being made redundant and they're feeling rather emotional around it. Of course. Well, with coaching, as we all know, it's not about delving into the past and helping them through the past. Um, that's what counselling does. Yeah. And I'm not a counsellor and don't want to be a counsellor. Yeah. Coaching's about where are we now? Where do we want to be? Yes. How are we going to get you there? So after, after having this technique um, uh, experience, I just thought that for me is the perfect tool to right, how you know, if they're struggling with being made redundant or whatever, mm. let's deal with that first then. And if we can deal with that in such a short period of time, get them to reframe it, yeah. then move them forwards to where they want to go. Absolutely. I think we'll get much better results. I really do. Of course, of course. Imagine if you're like a relationship coach and you're dealing with somebody who's coming through a divorce and say they want to go and form a new relationship with somebody. Well, by using IEMT on the actual divorce and the past relationship, they're not going to be carrying that emotional baggage when they're now meeting new people. Oh, how nice for their new partner. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. (laughs) Because then again, you're meeting people without what what IMT does. It kind of it clears the filter which you're seeing people through. Mm. So instead of seeing people through, you know, the past filters and almost provoking their behaviour that you're trying yes. to, um, you can actually see them for who they are. Yes. You know, and yeah. so because I used to work um, as a dating coach for a, a long time, and that's exactly what I found. I used to like working with people in their thirties and forties, and who want to go and basically get into relationships, but they may have been through a very painful divorce and they don't think they're going to meet anybody ever again because that last divorce was so emotional. And once you begin to clear that up, they can then go out and have fun and actually meet people. Yes. Let me ask you, because I was just saying before we started recording, just how well you look. Um, And I think that I often find this because there was a, there was a couple of, when did we do the sessions? A couple of weeks ago now, at least, wasn't it? About two, three weeks. It was probably four weeks ago, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was, four it was weeks probably ago. four weeks ago. Yeah. So we did one session for about half an hour to an hour, four weeks ago. And what kind of impact has that had on you, on your current, your current state of well-being? What have people said? How have you been experiencing life? Lots of people have said, oh, you look well. Mm. Um, they are used to seeing me not look very well. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've had something freed from me. Yeah. I also want to start looking now at what work can I do? Yes. Um, and I know that I will never work to the capacity I worked at before or um, the reach I worked at before, mm. i.e. I work worldwide. Um, so it's kind of, I've been actually believing that I can work with my new version of normal. Um, I have a lot of um, physical damage from the treatment I've had. I had a lot of radiation, so I have a lot of physical damage. Mm-hmm. So I am now class as disabled, which I have never been before. Yeah. And I have had to get used to that. And I fully accept it. Mm. And I'm okay with it. It saved my life. That's the yeah, way I look at it now. And I also look at, it saved my life. I'm here. It almost feels like... Um, right, I've got another shot at this. What do I really want to do? Nice and part nice. of that is to, uh, a lot of the element of business coaching is confidence coaching. It's about yeah. self-belief. It's about resilience. It's about things like that. And that's what I want to specialise in now. I feel mm-hmm. like the business coaching I loved for so many years, mm-hmm. um, I'm sure I still would love if I did it, but I feel I want to help people moving forwards from something awful that's happened yeah. getting back to a new version of normal or i should say creating a new version of normal for themselves that's what yeah. i want to do and i just feel like uh, my head's cleared 
ready to plan. I'm writing a new book called Extraordinary Mindset. Um, all the chapter titles are down. Um, I know exactly where I want it to go. I know who it's for. I've done the market research around it, etc., cetera, et cetera. That, that's done. Um, I've also got some issues I need to deal with with the hospital. I, I was told I was terminally ill before the biopsy results came back. Um, so I have a complaint to have to make. Um, and I was very reticent about making that complaint mm-hmm. because it was kind of, how do you make a complaint to the hospital that saved your life? Yeah. However, it's a complaint it needs making because that mistake doesn't want making twice. Of course. So I help, I, in doing that, it's just a factual thing that I'll be doing. But because the emotions were removed from the things I had to mm. talk about um, in the complaint, it, it's just a factual thing that hopefully pre- prevents somebody else from doing it. Perfect. I would also like to say for anyone else watching this, it was about four weeks ago. And the only reason we've not done this video before is my 92 year old mum fell, broke a hip. She has dementia and I've been at the hospital every day for two weeks with her. Mm. Um, so um, that's the only reason we haven't done this. So even after doing that, I still feel more well. Well, this is, and I also like to give it um, a few weeks um, for the changes to kind of settle in. Because a lot of sort of therapists and coaches, they like to do testimonials straight away when you're powered up and feeling great and can take on the world, which is great and everything. But I don't think there's much value in sort of that kind of style of motivation. I think real motivation comes through when you remove emotion rather than just build it up um, by actually addressing the fears, addressing the problems. And then like, say, it sounds like since we actually did the sessions, you've become much more proactive in what you want to do. Um, and that, that's what I find really happens with people is that motivation and being in a peak state is not a sustainable and it's not good for you, you know, to be, no. you, know, you know, it's your blood pressure will be awful to be in Too that. Much adrenaline. Yeah. Absolutely. You can't be in that sort of super pumped up state all the time. I generally find people are the most productive, are the ones that um, have all this anxiety and stuff removed and they just get on with things and they're able to see what can I do rather than just thinking about the past. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what's happened. And it's made me think, actually, I can do this new kind of normal. I can do this. I can move forward. I can create something. Um, I've been, you know, I've worked for myself for many years. Mm. Um, And it's one of those situations. Can I create something from nothing? Yeah. Um, one One of the decisions I have to make, which I haven't made yet, do I want to go forward and have this as a company or do I want to set it up as a more charitable status? Right. Haven't decided that one yet, but I have booked in to go to a meeting um, on the middle of October. I live in Leicestershire um, to actually hear about some local funds that are helping people set something up that would be of charitable right. status so that I can find a bit more about out about it. So basically I'm just being very proactive about all the research about, about all of it yeah excellent and that when i work with people who have anxiety self-diagnosed depression low self-esteem it's there's a lot of labels you know basically when Mm -hmm. people are feeling down because they've been through something bad or they've been made redundant they've been through divorce they've been through a you know an illness whatever it might be um they just don't do anything uh in terms of they're just existing they're getting up in the morning and they're not taking care of themselves. They're not doing much physically. And with IEMT, when you start to take out the things which are underpinning these problems, it allows you to go do things that are physical, actually do things which are tangible. And I believe that confidence, you don't get confidence before you do the thing. You get confidence after you do the the activity. So this is why I really want to get more coaches um, and other therapists involved with this particular tool and technique and framework Mm -mm. because it helps people to get much better results in a much shorter period of time Mm -mm. um whilst you know i think that sometimes by doing imt it's almost (coughs) like doing loads of therapy in a very short period without having to do the therapy but you tend to get the same results because you know we said that you've already when you're looking back on one of those memories now you're getting a different understanding from it and I didn't yeah. lead you to any, I didn't tell you what changes to have. I didn't tell you what was going to happen. In fact, let me ask you, when we actually did the, the eye movement, so if people don't know, it's about moving the Excuse eyes. Me. 
<coughs> yes. No problem. I'll edit it out. Don't worry. Mm. So, in fact, let's just talk about it actually, because pe- if people don't know what IEMT is, it's holding onto a memory whilst moving the eyes in a particular way through the different quadrants whilst the client focuses on that memory. So you need to move their eyes and you have the client holding onto the memory. What was your experience of actually going through the process and what was it like? Because I didn't tell you what was going to happen. I no, just you didn't. To, yeah, so what, what did you actually think of the process itself? <coughs> I just felt odd. Yeah. My head felt a little unbalanced. Yep. Um, almost like you've got water in your ears after you've been swimming. Yeah. You know, you just yes. feel a little bit unbalanced. Nothing scary or anything. Mm. Just a little bit, oh, that feels a bit odd. Um, and that was that. That, that was it. I didn't experience mm. anything else. Um, yeah, that was it. So um, very little... Um, you know, I've had all sorts of different therapies whilst mm. I've been recovering from the illness and had different uh, massages and stuff. And I've found myself a brilliant massage therapist. But I have had sort of re- reflexology done before now. Okay. And then thrown up so many times and had mm. to go to bed for a day and all sorts of things like that because it yeah. physically makes you... Removing all the toxins makes you feel so ill and all the rest of it. This almost feels a bit like you're removing the toxins from your brain. Yeah. And you don't feel ill after it there's no after effect there's yeah. nothing um it, it was just literally it was just kind of over and done with i did sit very quietly afterwards on purpose for a while yeah. just contemplating and just try and still my mind yeah. and then i just carried on as normal i often find that it takes people a couple of days because they'll often start thinking in different ways different stuff will come up um, mm. their, their dreams can often be a bit crazy for a couple of nights where it's, it's almost like purging this information. You're, you're reprocessing a lot of information and mm. um, you're almost rewriting your own story. And so that can take a little while. So I usually see people like two or three sessions over about a month and so I can review how they're doing, um, and, you know, teach, you know, through the intervals. Um, but it sounds like you've had some brilliant changes. It sounds like, you know, you've, you know, you've responded very well. Mm. Um, and hopefully like we were just saying before, I'm going to be running some trainings in the future. It'd be great to see you at a training as well. In fact, let me just Absolutely. ask you, now you said that you've been through, you've had different types of therapies. Yes. Now I'm not saying IMT is better or worse or anything like that. Mm. But how would you rate the IMT approach as opposed to the, the was it talking therapies and CBT and that kind of stuff you did? Or? Uh, no, I've never had that. I've had oh. um, physical therapies like um, uh, reflexology, yeah. acupuncture, crystal therapy. Uh, crystal therapy I found to be really powerful as well. Um, I have had counselling. Okay. Um, 12 years ago, my marriage ended. Um, well, my marriage ended, my daughter was diagnosed with a tumour and my best friend died in a wow. six-month period. Wow. And I, that's, the only, that's the only experience I ever have of depression. I got very low mm. at that time and went for counselling, um, which did really help. Yeah. Um, it took a long time and mm. a lot of crying it out and a lot of revisiting very horrible memories. There is, and I think the main difference between sort of counselling and something like IEMT is that counselling, you're talking a lot about the problem. IEMT, yeah. you don't really need to talk about the problem at all. You know, no, long, you don't. You didn't need to know what it was, did you? No. Yeah. So I've worked with a lot of people who have been in, uh, sexually abused, for example, and a yeah. lot of men who have been sexually abused um, mm. at football academies, at scouts, oh. in the church, this kind of... Yeah. Now, they don't want to talk about the experience, and that's fine. You don't need to. We can simply, all we need to do is we need to understand the structure of the memories, what we call the submodalities. And that's like, is it a picture? Is it a movie? Is this in color? Is there any sound? We all, and then basically how strong is the emotion? We don't need to know the narrative. We don't need to know what happened or who did what or who said what or who did, you know, we don't need to know anything like that. So that's why, that's one of the reasons why I really love IEMT. You don't need to talk about the experience to actually get the benefit. <coughs> And I think I think personally that is key mm. because I am happy to be open. Yeah. As I'm happy to be open on this video because I'm all about helping other people. If this can help somebody else, yeah. 
uh, it's just kind of and I wanted people to know how strong the emotion was for me yeah I'm not saying emotions aren't strong when you've been made redundant but me being made redundant to your children being told your mum's about to die yeah it uh, are, are on a different kind of level of course that's why I wanted to say that um and I am open but there are a lot of people that are very very closed books hmm. and don't want to tell anybody and they have to trust that um person that is there helping them whether it's a counselor a coach yeah. someone like you say maybe doing cbt or anything like yeah. that and that i think there still has to be an element of trust with this yes of course. Um, but the trust is different because i don't need to tell you mm. what the issue is you, you don't need to know that so you can keep it to yourself still so you're healing without having to um say it out loud again and and also really hard to do and also, because that can cause re-traumatization, just talking about it again and yeah. again. What I do is I facilitate a change. I never tell, I know the outcomes you're likely to have. I know the memory is going to seem more distant, harder to get. The emotional connection will go down. The colors will fade. Um, it'll often go from a subjective, that's where you're seeing it through your own eyes, to an objective point of view. I know those outcomes are likely to happen but I never tell the client what's going to happen. I like to show them the, the actual physical demonstration of what it is. Yeah. And then I'll often say, you'll probably have this because I'm facilitating a change. I'm not telling you how to change or how to feel. I'm just facilitating exactly. it. And it yeah. just has, ve and the thing is with this, I often find in coaching, you get different techniques in NLP and therapy and hypnosis. I know as a hypnotist, I can't really hypnotize some people. I don't know if something's going to really work and it's hard to test. With IMT, I have uber confidence because I know it works with most of the people most of the time. Mm -hmm. It's not just the technique, it's the framework, it's the patterns of chronicity that we use and that's what you learn in the training. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me, about how you work with a client, especially if they are difficult and they don't know, and they don't know how to articulate the problem. You, you, you actually... Uh, I'm not going to get too much into it, but basically you can really sort of niche down onto what the actual issue is and then work on that particular thing. Um, and that's why I really do like the, this whole process because you can use it to work on uh, memories that people know that they have. So you knew what your memories were. Yes. Now a lot of people just know they feel sad or down or anxious. Right. And so, and so therefore what you do is you take that emotion and you regress it back to when they first felt that way to what we call the imprint. And that's when you then apply the eye movements to as well. So, yeah. and so a lot of people won't go for therapy because they don't want to talk about themselves and they don't want to. And I get, I get that. I, I don't really want to. So this is why it's so progressive in the way that you don't need to talk about the problem in order to still get great results in a very short period of time. And these are not, short held results. Like I said, we did a session and say a month or so ago, we've had no content, well, a few emails, but no actual real content like this. And no. I haven't known how you've been for, for a month, but you know, the results are obvious. Um, like I say, you're looking so much better as well. And this is what I always find people's body language changes because when you're, when you don't have as much cortisol and adrenaline, everything pumping through your body, you feel better and you look better and you start to take better care of yourself. You start going out people start noticing and it starts to spiral upwards. Things start mm. to build kind of from there. Cool. We're going to bring it to a close any minute now. Do you have anything else that you kind of want to say or share or for the people listening before we uh, sign off? Oh, let me have a think. Um, <clears throat> I think the thing that um, I, I um, have tried lots of techniques and all sorts of different things. And I just think for me, this is an absolute standout. Mm. Um, to the point that I actually said to you, do you train other people how to do this? Matt, I need to know how to do it. I said that as soon as the session had happened mm. uh, four weeks ago, and I've said it again to you today just before we started filming. So um, I just um, want to know when those dates are so I can uh, come I, and get that training sorted. I, this yeah. is why I am going to go, this is the reason why I wanted to do this interview as well. I am going to start training more people. Um, I love speaking about IMT. I've done lots and lots of talks all over london um hopefully further afield as well in the future because i think this technique is brilliant and i think more people should know about it mm -hmm. more people should be using it um it's a shame we didn't even get a before video to see what you were like and the reaction to when you're thinking about those memories oh it is 
Yeah, I just cried. I couldn't hold myself together. It was, a, and, and, it, yeah. you know, it was just too emotional for me. It was overwhelming. Exactly. Yeah. It's just yeah. like black and white, the difference between what you were like and what you're like now. Really? Um, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, when you were thinking about it before, you were in control. You know, you were obviously very upset, um, which is completely natural and normal to, you know, to, to experience. But if you need to do things, it doesn't help. You know, when you have these traumatic memories sort of around and sort of draining mm. all your energy and stopping you from moving on. Mm. Now, again, when I, I say it's about removing negative memories, obviously it's not removing, it's readdressing. But yes. removing sounds a bit sexier, doesn't it? So, but it's readdressing memories so they are no longer a, a bother. That's basically what it comes down to. And oh, I love that, Matt. No longer a bother. Yeah. I love that sentence. It yeah. It, it removes the significance from the memory. Yeah. And once you remove the significance, you see it, well, that's just something that happened. It's not great, but it's just something that happened. I've now got my life to leave. Live. Yeah. Live, like, lead, lead, live, whatever. I've got things <laughs> to get on with. And that's why yeah. I always find once you start, I understand that people want to be super, super happy and motivated. If you just help people to remove the crap around them, they don't have that need to strive for greatness anymore because everything's okay. Mm. Um, because people, it's like if you get a ball, like a, an air, like a ball filled with air and pushed it underwater, it becomes desperate to shoot up. Okay, and it'll shoot out the water, but then obviously it'll come back down again. And that's how a lot of people live their lives, especially with like the, the sensational type of self-help and you know, the rah-rah, you know, doing firewalks and trying to prove they're great. And I always find if people need to feel heroic and great and all that it's because there's something wrong it's usually from uh low self-esteem or something and if you deal with those issues you don't need to pump yourself up full of these rah rah kind of therapies there's no need to be great anymore you can just mm. be you can just be as you are mm. it feels um i am still the same person that went into the um illness and and came out the other side mm. um i just have different capabilities coming out the other side um that i then have to manage around how i do things yeah um timing wise and stuff and, and all sorts of stuff um i don't need to prove anything to anybody um because i feel that i could still do what i did um but with more up-to-date input and the removal of the stress around the, like you say, the stress around the awful memories of it. Yeah. It's kind of, it's just what it is. Yeah. Um, uh, it is what it is. What's happened has happened, but that's exactly it. It's happened. Yeah. Um, so when you kind of think what's the worst thing that can happen to you, um, and one of them's already happened and actually I'm still here to tell the tale and smiling and laughing and feel normal. Mm. Um, Hey ho, it's kind of onwards and upwards, off we go then. And it feels very calm. It doesn't yeah. feel rah rah pumped up. Yeah. But what about when you get home and you've got to do it by yourself? I've been at home all the time because we did this over the internet. Yeah. Um, it, it, I've, I've, done, I've been here doing this all the time. There was no rah rah pumped up. It was just, oh, it was very gentle. Yeah. Well, I want to say a massive thank you for speaking to me today and hopefully this is going to help change people's lives who watch this, who decide to either have sessions or train in it or mm -hmm. seek out another. Th I don't mind if you come to me or go to anyone else or, or just like find out more about it or even do it at home, learn it. You know what I mean? I just think that this technique should be um, much more widely known and used um, because I think we can make, uh, we can really, really help people to get over a lot of problems and you know we're living in weird times at the moment so i think that we need all the help that we can get especially if we want to move forward and develop i think it's a perfect tool to do that again especially in combination with a different therapy type or coaching of some degree yeah i think it works brilliant so a massive thank you for speaking to me today thank you very much a massive thank you to you matt for um introducing me to this and and making these well facilitating these massive changes that i've uh, i've experienced okay thanks Matt. absolute pleasure and i'll see you on the training <laughs> okay thanks matt bye-bye okay,